Hello everyone, this is Samarth from Went Wealth. In today's video, we are going to be telling you everything you need to know about bonds. I am sure you all know what are loans. In simple terms, bonds are like loan agreements between companies and investors. Consider a company ABC. Now, this company ABC wants to raise funds of 5 crore in the debt market. But instead of going to a bank, and take a term loan of 5 crores, it decides that it will directly reach out to investors, investors like you and me or institutional investors and get this money. How do they do it? They do it by issuing bonds. Just like loans have an interest which is to be paid by the borrower to the lender, the lender can be a bank or an MBFC, in bonds also, the company which is the borrower has to pay a rate of interest to the investor and the time period for which the bond is issued is called tenure. Coming back to the example, company ABC wants to raise funds in debt market. They decide to issue bonds. The quantum of the bonds is, that is the issue size, is rupees 5 crores. The rate of interest or the return which they decide to pay to the investors is 10% XRR per annum and the time period for which they want to issue the bond or the maturity of the bond in this case is 1.5 years or 18 months, meaning after 18 months, the company will pay you the final installment of the principal along with interest, after which the bond will cease to exist. Now, when company ABC decides to issue bonds, anyone who is interested in their business or likes their business and has confidence in the company can invest in their bonds. The bonds can be purchased by retail investors, investors like you and me, or it can also be purchased by institutional investors. It can be banks, it can be mutual funds, it can be other financial institutions or non-financial institutions. Now, such bonds which are issued by companies or NBFCs, that is non-banking financial companies, are called corporate bonds. So can bonds only be issued by companies? No. Governments or other financial institutions or non-financial institutions can also issue bonds. In fact, the bonds can also be issued which do not have a fixed interest rate. Those are called floating rate bonds. For this video, we'll only be focusing on fixed interest rate corporate bonds. Now, before we go into the details, there are some terms which you should definitely know about. So, first of which is face value or par value. In simple terms, this is the amount which you pay to the company when you subscribe to the bond. Or, this is the minimum amount which the company will pay you back when the bond matures. For example, if you invested 10,000 in a bond and you hold one unit, then the face value of the bond is 10,000. Second, coupon rate. The yearly interest rate earned on the bond is its coupon rate. So, for our example, on the bonds issued by ABC, the coupon rate is 10%. And the third term is credit rating. Remember how your exam answer sheets used to be graded in school? Similar to that, any financial or non-financial institution can go to the rating agencies. Rating agencies like Crystal, Ikra, Care or others and ask the rating agencies to rate the companies. Now, basis the financial strength of that institution, past performance, equity strength and some other parameters, the rating agencies provide a rating to these institutions. Now, we'll talk about types of corporate bonds. Now, corporate bonds can be classified as secured and unsecured bonds. What are secured bonds? Any bond which has an underlying collateral, that collateral be in the form of a property, land, or machinery or a pool of loans is called a secured bond. A bond which is issued without any underlying collateral is called unsecured bonds. As of now, you can find secured bonds. In fact, only senior secured bonds on Wintwealth platform. Another way to classify the bonds is basis the way they can be transacted. The bonds which can be transacted on an exchange are called listed bonds. The bonds which cannot be traded on any exchange are called unlisted bonds. Now we'll cover something which is very very important is the type of risks which you take up when you invest in any of the bonds. The first risk which you would take up is credit risk. What is credit risk? Suppose you invest in bonds of a company called ABC Limited and the tenure of the bond is let's say 18 months. But what if the company goes out of business and becomes bankrupt before 18 months? Then the money which you've invested in the bond gets stuck. 
this is called crate risk liquidity risk is when you do not have an exit option or i should say an easy exit option from your investment if you have invested in a bond you should invest with the intention of holding it till maturity why because of course bonds can be traded they can be sold but finding a interested buyer in the bond is much more difficult than finding a buyer for a stock this is called liquidity risk and the third risk is fraud risk fraud risk is when the issuing company is giving out false information about certain parameters for example the information which it provided about the underlying collateral and in reality let's suppose that those collaterals do not even exist in this case the company is committing a fraud by giving false information and this is called fraud risk which can significantly impact the safety and the strength of your investment why should i invest in bonds okay tell me one thing do you invest in equity markets or mutual funds yes does that not have risk of course it does every investment comes with some amount of risk in fact equity based investments are riskier than bonds but i understand your concern which is why the expert team at wentwell places strict covenants or quality checks on the nbfcs before bringing the bonds on our platform okay but tell me this i already invest in stocks and mutual funds why should i invest in bonds then all of those are great investments to have but have you heard about diversification when your portfolio is filled only one type of asset you are at a greater risk of losing your money i'm sure you know how volatile the market has been over the past few months imagine having a purely equity based portfolio in such times your portfolio will always be at the risk of turning red in such a scenario having debt based investments like bonds help you diversify and add stability to your portfolio to know more about why you should invest in bonds watch this video bonds are debt investments stocks are equity investments when you invest into bonds of a company you become a lender or a creditor to the company when you buy stocks you become part owner of the company stocks provide high returns and high liquidity to the investors bonds have lower returns and lower liquidity in comparison stocks are considered high risk investments because of how volatile they can be bonds with good credit score are relatively less risky investments and provide fixed income i hope this video gave you a clear picture of what a bond is until we meet next time happy winding